gonna take a quick little left. Just give me one second. Just Be good. How y'all doing? Good. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. To today's video, y'all know why we're here. Y'all know why we're here. Y'all have read the title. You know why we're here. I'm calm. Like, give me one second. Just one more lap. Just, I just need a lap. We're good. How we doing? The news is here. The Detroit Lions have officially signed DJ Reader. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to our video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with some breaking news. Oh my goodness, it has happened. Where do we go? What do we do? What do I do? I don't know. All right, we're good. Calm down. Calm down. Look, I'm going to read this direct from the source. This will help me out. Here we go. According to Tom Pelissero. Veteran DT DJ Reader has agreed to terms with the Lions on a two-year deal, sources tell me, at Rap Sheet, at Mike Garofolo. Another big addition, this time literally, for the Detroit defense. It's official. It's official. The Detroit Lions have officially signed DJ Reader. And oh my goodness, I'm a little excited. I'm a little bit excited. I'm just a little bit excited. Are you kidding me? Guys, okay, let's take a step back. So we knew DJ Reader was meeting with the Lions today. You just didn't know when. I assumed it happened in the morning. I didn't know when. So I just knew he was meeting, all right? I couldn't make it to the airport, so that didn't happen. But we knew he was meeting with the Lions today. But I'll tell you what, man. I went to bed last night after last night's show, which, by the way, I appreciate all of you guys joining. After changing my name and putting DJ Reader in my name, I went to bed without a, without a worry. I had zero concern that this was going to take place. Sheldon Rankins to the Bengals. We started hearing that on X yesterday. Then I stepped back. I'm like, wait a minute. Titans signed Calvin Ridley. We're going to get DJ Reader. And what do you know? Pushing 4 p.m. Eastern time. According to Schultz on Bleacher Report. Shout out to Bleacher Report. We did a show today. And we talked about this man. Former Bengals DT agrees to a two-year deal worth up to $27.25 million, which, by my quick math, essentially $13.5 million per season, up to essentially $13.5 million per season. There will probably be void years towards the end of that deal, I would assume. We'll see how they set that up. With that being said, though, the Lions were coming in to this move with about $30 million in cap space, so they have flexibility. They have money to make a move like this. But you know what I love the most about that news isn't the number. It's not the number. It's the two-year aspect. Now, that's not to say I'm like, oh, I want to be able to get off of this guy's contract immediately. But no, I wanted that flexibility. It was one of the biggest perks of a guy like Sheldon Rankins was like, hey, a two-year deal. Someone that would take a two-year deal would be perfect. With Broderick Martin going into year two, you could still leave year four open for him to potentially step into the role if he's ready to go. You know, obviously, DJ Reader, if he's here, he's balling out, he's doing his thing. Maybe you extend him. That'll be down the road. But you still leave that door to be kind of open. While at the same time, what's next up for the Lions is the extensions. It's Lee McNeil. It's Penny Sewell. It's Amon Ross St. Brown. It's Jared Goff. And all these cap hits that are going to begin to hit. It's all about the timing. We always talk about the timing. Well, what's likely to happen with this timing is that early in the contract probably won't be the highest number for a lot of these new extensions, which will mean that it'll probably align extremely well with the second year being much higher in terms of cap hit for DJ Reader. I'm just guessing because that's how the Lions usually do their contracts. So the fact that this was a two-year deal from what it's initially reported makes this even better because it fits even better. The three-year deal was like, I'm just not mad at it. But two years would be perfect in my eyes. And they got it on a two-year deal. So, coming off a torn quad injury, and trust me, we're going to do a breakdown. Today, today, I was breaking down Carlton Davis. Like, let me focus on Carlton Davis. Take my mind off it. I got to focus my energy. So, I'm focused on Carlton Davis. But, oh, my goodness, when we break down DJ Reader, oh, my goodness, that's going to be something special. My number one defensive tackle coming into free agency. Then we find out Christian Wilkins is going to be available. So, I re-rank it. DJ Reader still at number one. 
Entering this offseason, cornerback was my biggest need. The Lions addressed that immediately. And I posted a video a couple nights ago saying DJ Reader is the perfect fit for the Detroit Lions. The perfect fit based on what's out there in free agency. You can address this position by one of the best at his position that gives us a great run defender, a very good pass rusher that posted 34 pressures while missing games towards the end of the season. Just last season alone, 34 pressures from the nose tackle position, yet he still gives you flexibility on your defensive front. He fits in perfectly stylistically to a defense that may play that gap and a half style. He fits in perfectly to that because that's what they would do with Cincinnati as well. He's the perfect combination with the Lee McNeil, who's trimmed down a little bit, become a big force as a pass rusher. Now you put him next to this man, DJ Reader, one of the best run defenders. The flexibility, the pad level that he plays with, the motor that he plays with as a pass rusher, still having a, having a little bit of an arsenal as a pass rusher. An athleticism to work against his own rushing plays that are away from him laterally, laterally, get upfield vertically, play with a crazy amount of toughness. This is the anchor that this defense needed. And all these defenses that have similarities of what the Lions are trying to do. A lot of them have their Braddock Martin body type. But when that piece hits, it's like the glue guy of this defense. Right? I was looking at old old charts that I had made years ago. About our, comparing our defensive line to New Orleans Saints. And then I compared it to the Bengals when they had DJ Reader. And now he's our guy, so I'm very excited about that. And it was always like, who's that nose tackle for us? We got Mark Braddock. It was like, that's the body type. But you're talking about a guy that is absolutely proven, as I said, one of the best players to enter free agency this year, yet to me was the best defensive tackle on the board. Now, you could argue for other guys like Wilkins because of their age and things like that, but like I said yesterday, player for player, if I could choose one, if I was just like, hey, they're both playing, I'll take DJ Reader, please. And my goodness, we got him. Oh, my goodness. And I look, we, we talked about this player. Right, I've talked about him. I did the defensive tackle video. But what this means for this defensive front, Josh Pascal is going to be a part of the future here. Right, I think that's the Lions' vision. Right, They're going to build through the draft, as they always say, so they follow that process. But what this defense was missing, as one of the best run defenses in football, was that glue guy in the interior. And what he also adds, he's not just a big-time run defender that in goal line situations where we struggle to stop the run, where you can kind of get away from some of the schematic side of things, now all of a sudden he plugs in with a Lee McNeil, yet he can fit with every defensive tackle we have because he brings versatility, he brings flexibility, gives you upside as a pass rusher, where at times Cincinnati used him on third-down packages to rush the passer you can do that with him too if you want to you can put him out in those spots he's capable of doing that but not only does he fit perfectly for this defense this defensive line just got disgusting I mean and I, and I can't put into words in this video without really breaking it down how nasty this defensive line is right now Ali McNeil who to me is one of the best interior defensive linemen in football, especially young ones. That's just on the upswing, broke out last season as we anticipated. I expect more of the same. DJ Reader, one of the best nose tackles the game has while also offering flexibility. He's not that guy that can only play two downs, only play the run, or he's not the guy that I'll, I'll sub in on third down, kind of like Sheldon Rankins, but I'm not really going to help you on the early downs. He brings both. But now, schematically speaking, he's not just a pure two-gapper that can only just stand there and go like this. No, he can move. He can get upfield. He can get lateral. He can play gap and a half. Now you put those two, one of the scariest interior defensive linemen, defensive lines together, which, by the way, I'm so pumped to see everybody in the interior get an opportunity to learn next to this guy. Next to Josh Pascal, the second-round pick, who, like I said, I believe he's going to be part of the future, and I think the Lions do as well at one defensive end. Rotate him in with John Kaminsky, who's now going to stick around because he took the pay cut, as well as the new addition, who, with the New Orleans Saints, let me just throw his pressure stats on, on the screen right now to put this into context. Jonathan Greenard's past season, his breakout season, was 11.8%. That is what you're getting there when on the field, especially a majority of that's with the New Orleans Saints, in Marcus Davenport. That's what he has. He's capable of that. And then on the flip side, oh, yeah, you have one of the best, one of the handful best edge rushers, especially as a pass rusher that went over 100 pressures this past season, Aiden Hutchinson. You have one of the nastiest defensive fronts in football. Done it. Really, a year and a half. For the last year and a half, they've been a very good run-to-stopping team where schematically, defensive backs had to get involved. Safety had to help us tackle, right? And we had Benito Jones and Isaiah Bugs, and, man, those guys rose to the occasion, man. They gave us a lot. 
And Ali McNeil, when he was out there, he was a stud. He's been the staple. But now you shift into getting an elite run defender with that. What that does for everybody else at the second level, at Campbell going into year two next to Alex Sanzaloni, next to Derek Barnes, who found a little bit of a role as a Sam backer. James Houston is now officially back. Cornerback's been addressed like crazy. I am loving Carlton Davis, okay? Quick little side note, the guy that will literally shadow Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs. From what I've seen so far, this guy will go play your number one, right? He'll move around, follow that guy around. And then in the back end, two of the best young safeties in football, if he was one of the best to end last season, this defense just got – this defense just completely flipped because this, to me, was not there in the draft. I didn't find it. I haven't seen it yet. I have not seen a player like this in the draft yet. I just haven't. And I've been watching him, trying to catch up on him. Braden Fisk. I mean, throw the name. I just haven't seen this guy yet. He's just not there. Not for year one. And you have that next to Ali McNeil with Levi rotating in, with Broderick Martin sitting behind and could be a rotational nose tackle, yet you still leave the window for him to become the guy at some point. Oh, my goodness. This is an incredible signing. This was the perfect addition for the Detroit Lions in free agency. Guard, it'll have to be an answer throughout the draft. You look at wide receiver, we still have to figure it out. We'll keep an eye on Josh Reynolds. You can add that through the draft. The draft is deep with that. Free agency is a little bit lighter. But this position, the top guy was chilling right there, and he fit the Lions perfectly. And the Lions said, bring him home. Bring him home. Let's go get our glue guy for this defense. So the big question, of course, is going to be when will he be available this season? He had the torn quad at the end of the season, played a majority of the season. He's also had the injury back years ago as well. And that's a big reason I believe the Lions had him into for a visit to get a sense on where kind of that was at. I don't know how long it's going to take. I mean, quick Google search will say maybe four to six months, somewhere in that range. And the fact that it was near the end of the season definitely could be pushing up towards, you know, kind of the beginning of the season, somewhere in that range. But I'm sure the Lions have a pretty good sense for where that is, whether that's, hey, we have to, you know, go add this piece now to feel really comfortable until that time or the flip side of, OK, he's going to be ready. We're good to go there. That's a big reason I believe they brought him in for a visit. So that'll be the biggest question. A great run defender, a good pass rusher, and I'm not just saying good for who he is, a good interior pass rusher just in general. He's just a good interior pass rusher. And this is the move. Mark my words, this guy will completely alter this Lions defense. Everything else that's involved, this guy's going to be the difference up front. And I'm going to leave it right there. We'll break this player down a little bit later. But DJ Reader is a Detroit freaking lion. And I <laughs> I can't stop smiling, man. $110 million for Wilkins, and we took this dude for 27.25? What? Appreciate y'all joining, man. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.